Have you ever created a document and you find keywords, sentences, or paragraphs that you would like to expound upon, give additional details or information about, but you don't want to type a note next to it because it would detract away from the flow of the document? What you can do instead is insert what are called footnotes and endnotes. All this will do is tag that word, sentence, or paragraph when you click next to it with a number. For example, if it's your first footnote or endnote, it begins with the number one. And as you go throughout the document tagging additional ones, it will number them sequentially as in two, three, four, and so on. And then where does that note end up? If it's a footnote, after you tag it with a number beginning with number one, it'll appear at the footer of the page, hence footnote. Or if it's an endnote, it'll appear at the end of the document, hence endnote. Now, I prefer footnotes when I'm reading a document because if I see a number here where I'd like to learn more or find out about the reference, it's easier for me at that time to scroll down to the bottom of the page to read the note and not lose my place than it is to flip to the end of the document to read the endnote and then to find my way back where I last left off. I'll show both. So to insert, like let's first of all do a footnote. Let's scroll down and place our cursor. After a word, a phrase, a paragraph that I want to insert, additional notes about it. So we'll do it for this statement here. And to insert a footnote, come up here and click on the References tab. Go to the Footnotes group, and you can do it one of two ways. You can insert a basic footnote, or if you want to insert something with a bit more details or options, you can click on the Expandable Dialog Box button, and you get a lot of other options. Let's close out of that and do something simple. Insert a simple footnote, click on it, and whoa, what happened? Well, it took you to the footer of the page to type in your note that you tagged, which, well, there you go, number one, that when you scroll back up, was right here at the end of that statement. As you can see right there, one. So let's scroll back down into the footer of the page to add a note, hence footnote. And there you go. Now, if I want to find out which paragraph or what line or word this footnote is tied to, you can go ahead and double click really fast on one there and it takes you, well you have to look up at the top there, right to it. See the cursor is flashing right to the footnote to that statement and you can also hover over the number and you get the pop-up if you don't want to scroll to the bottom of the page to read the footnote and you can see it, read it right there. You can also double click really fast and it takes you right down to the footer of the page to make changes to the footnote or to read about it. And of course that's only for electronic forms whereas when you print it off well, you can be able to glance up to the number and down at the bottom and then not so much as lose your place as if you had to go to the end of the 200 page document to go, oh, what's this about? In any case, you'll find application use for both the footnotes and endnotes. Maybe it's just more of referencing to have an endnote and where you got your thoughts from that they can read all together at once at the end of the document as opposed to something that might be more relevant at the time that they're reading on that page to have it down below in the footer of that page. So let's go ahead and scroll up and let's do another one. So it's number one and it numbers them sequentially. So if I put one after it, it'd be number two. But what if I decide to put one before it? What do you think is going to happen? Well, it'll renumber them. You want to find out? Sure, let's do it. Come up here to the footnotes group and instead of inserting a simple footnote, which we already know how to do, Let's go ahead and click on the expandable dialog box button and find out additional options when inserting a footnote. And there you go, footnotes and endnotes. We're not covering endnotes yet, so let's do footnotes, leave it as is. You can have it at the bottom of the page or below the text. I'll leave it at the bottom of the page. And then you've got the footnote layout, match the section layout, or you can choose different columns. Close out of that or click off. And then you've got the number formats. You can click on that and say, look, I'd rather have ABCs or some other format. Or do a custom marker symbol. You can start at 1 or go to 2, but we'll keep it simple. We'll start at number 1 when it comes to our footnotes. And then the numbering can be continuous, or you can restart at each section or at each page. That's kind of fun if you have a different organization purpose for your document when it comes to footnotes. And you can apply the changes to the whole document, or if we had sections, you could go ahead and apply it to a section. So, you get more options here. Otherwise, you can go with the defaults and just click on Insert Note, but choose your flavor, and then go ahead and click Insert, and guess what? What was number one has now become number two, and so number one is, is now a footnote, and he's happy. And so, if we go ahead and we double-click on one, takes us right up to the top of the page. There's one and there's two. Hover over one 
And he says he's now a footnote. Fabulous. Now let's go ahead and put another one, but let's do an end note so it appears at the end of the document. And we'll do it right after the first paragraph here. Come up here to the footnotes group. We can insert an end note or do more details when we click on the expandable dialog box and say end notes and go, okay, what else you got? Let's choose a different number format. But in any case, we know about that. Let's close out. And let's just go ahead and do a simple end note. Go with the defaults, click on it, and boom. Well, when we did a footnote, it took us right to the bottom of the page. And end note flips us to the end of the document to type in a note for that reference that's on page one. Now, the funny thing about this is, is that I don't have a separate page for my end notes. And so it appears right below the last paragraph of my document, which, well, you can do that if you want, but I don't. So let me go ahead and get rid of this. If I hit the backspace key several times, then eventually it deletes the one there. So I got rid of my end note. And instead of having the end note at the bottom of the last page, let's have a separate page at the end of the document that's just for end notes. So I'll hold down the control key and hit enter. And if you think you deleted it, that's not a good idea to delete it either in the footer of the page or in this case at the end of the page for the end note because, well, some of the other options are frozen because it still thinks that we're typing in an end note. So instead of doing that, if you want to get rid of it, Go ahead and double click on the one to take us back to the endnote and delete it within the document. So you can click after the footnote or endnote. And by the way, which one's an endnote, which one's a footnote? Because they both begin with the number one. Well, they're the same, but they're different because one is at the footer of the page and then the other one is at the end. Well, we don't have anything at the end. So to get rid of a footnote or an endnote, you can click behind it and hit the backspace key once and then twice or click in front of it, hit the delete key once, then twice, and it'll disappear. Then we can go ahead and go control end, as in the end of the document. Oh, let me click out of there. And go ahead and hold down the control key and hit enter. So I can get an additional page at the end of the document and say this is for my end note. There we go. So when I go ahead and insert an end note, it goes to the end of the document, which is the last page here, and it'll insert it from that point forward. Q. So let's go ahead and do control home and click at the end of the paragraph, come up here, click on insert endnote, and it took me right below it, fabulous. I know you're sad, but we're coming to the end of our training video. That's my endnote. In any case, whatever endnote is pertinent to where you inserted that, and to get back to it, you can double click on one, it takes me right back up to the top of the page where the endnote's at, you can hover over and read it without having to go to the end of the document. So that works well if you have it in electronic format, but if it's printed out, you can go ahead and have that last page off to the right of you so you can reference it back and forth. But for me, at least the work that I do, it's a lot easier if I went ahead and I had this as a footnote so I can go ahead and quickly glance down at the bottom and go, oh, that's what that's about. Oh, and one last thing. When you do go ahead and you double click to go to the end notes, when you're at the end note, you can right click on it and say go to the end note, which is like double clicking on the one, but if you're not good at getting right there to double click and you're like, I can't get right to it. Okay, the grammar is off. Let's right click to fix that. And in any case, you can right click on the number there to go to the end note. It takes you right to it so you don't have to double click. And also with their footnotes, you can right click on the number to go to the footnote. It takes you right to the top of the page. There's footnote number one for footnote one and number one for end note the first end note, and the only end note, and on which case I'll end it on a good note. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.